Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decree. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. In peace let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy, for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy, for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Was
pray together the collect of the day. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany is from the sixth chapter of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. When it had touched my mouth, he said, See, this has touched your lips, and your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. Toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. The epistle is from the ninth chapter, 1 Corinthians. St. Paul writes, Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are not you my workmanship in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, at least I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my answer to those who question my authority. Do we not have the right to eat and drink? Do we not have the right to take along a believing wife? as do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working for a living? Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard without eating any of its fruit? Or who tends a flock without getting some of the milk? Do I say these things on human authority? Does not the law say the same? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. Is it for oxen that God is concerned? Does he not certainly say this for our sake? Yes, this was written for our sake, because when the plowman plows and the thresher threshes, they ought to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a harvest of material things from you? If others have this right to support from you, should not we have it all the more? Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right, but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who work in the temple get their food from the temple, and those who serve at the altar share in the sacrificial offerings? In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But at your word I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both so, boats so full, they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has spoken by his prophets, spoken his unchanging word. Each from age to age proclaiming God the one, the righteous Lord. In the world's despair and turmoil, one firm anchor holds us fast. God is Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the remainder of the Epiphany season, throughout the month of February, we will focus on the doctrine of the divinity of Christ, which is a traditional theme for the Epiphany season. As we just confessed in the Nicene Creed, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, of very God. This doctrine of Christ's divinity is based on the testimony of the sacred scriptures in which he does divine works, is given divine names, possesses divine attributes, and has divine glory. The word epiphany means to reveal and make manifest, and the many miracles that Jesus performed during his earthly ministry such as the miraculous catch of fish in today's gospel reading, reveal and make manifest 
his true divine nature. As the Gospel of John says after his first miracle, turning water into wine, this, the first of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. There will be two solar eclipses in 2022 on April 30th and October 25th. Whenever a solar eclipse occurs, there are always news stories warning not to look directly into the sun because that can damage your eyes. Moses once said to the Lord, Now show me your glory. But the Lord responded, No one may see me and live. Beholding God in his perfect glory would be like looking directly into the sun, except that you wouldn't just be damaged, but totally destroyed. For God is perfectly holy and righteous, but we are wholly fallen and sinful. To use another nerdy illustration from Star Trek, God's holiness and our sinfulness are like matter and antimatter. If they come into contact, the result is our destruction, death, and damnation. For no one may see me and live. One way to safely observe a solar eclipse is through a welding mask. In the same way, during his earthly life, the Son of God masked his glory in human flesh. Paul puts it this way in Philippians, But he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Just as a welding mask allows you to safely view in action a solar eclipse of the sun, S-U-N, during his earthly life, the mask of Christ's human likeness allowed humans to safely view in action the ministry of God's Son, S-O-N. John puts it this way at the beginning of his Gospel. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God but the only begotten Son, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Paul continues in Philippians, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. That was the ultimate masking of Christ's divinity, his suffering and death on the cross. As those taunting him while he hung on the cross sneered, If you are the Son of God, come down now from the cross and save yourself. But instead of using his divine powers to save himself, he masked his divinity in a broken, bloody, tortured body, humbly giving up his life to save you like a lamb led to the slaughter, crucified, dead, and buried for us men and for our salvation. Paul puts it this way in Colossians. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. He has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through his death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. That is the essence of our faith. On account of Christ's blood shed on the cross, you are forgiven all your sins, you are reconciled to God without blemish and free from accusation in his sight. As Peter says in Acts, 
Everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Occasionally during his earthly life, Jesus did pull back the mask of his humanity and gave people a glimpse of his divine power and glory. We call those occasions miracles. The whole purpose of his miracles was to prove that Jesus is more than a carpenter from Nazareth with a second career as an itinerant rabbi. As Peter says in Acts, Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him. Jesus put it this way, The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. His miracles were a peek behind the mask of humanity that he wore during his life on earth, a brief but dazzling glimpse of his true divinity. As John reports the people saying among themselves, could this be the Christ? When the Christ comes, will he do more miraculous signs than this man? Surely this is the prophet who was to come into the world. And as John concludes at the end of his gospel, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So that is the primary significance of all Christ's miracles, a peek behind the mask of his humanity, a glimpse of his true divinity. The miraculous catch of fish in today's gospel reading occurs one morning on the Sea of Galilee when Jesus commandeers Peter's fishing boat in order to teach the large crowds gathered on the shore. Jesus has Peter put out a bit from the shore, and then Jesus converts that boat into the first Christian pulpit as he preaches the word of God across the waters to the crowd on the shore. At the end of the sermon, Jesus adds a personal sermon illustration for Peter to demonstrate the power of his word in the form of an unusual request. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. For an experienced fisherman on the Sea of Galilee like Simon Peter, that was a very odd request indeed. Still to this day, fishing on the Sea of Galilee takes place only at night. And the best fishing is not in the deep water, but along the shore. And so Peter answers, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. No doubt Jesus is an excellent carpenter, and certainly he is a wise rabbi and a powerful preacher. But as a fisherman, his advice to an experienced professional like Simon Peter is totally off the mark. But at your word, Peter continues, I will let down the nets. Peter heeds Jesus' odd request because this is not the first time that he has encountered Jesus. We learn from the other Gospels that already Peter has seen Jesus perform many miracles, including the healing of his own mother-in-law and many others in Peter's own house at Capernaum. Already Peter has heard Jesus preach, including the sermon given that very day from his own boat. So even though the fishing advice this carpenter and rabbi gives him goes against everything he knows as an experienced professional fisherman, he will do what Jesus says. 
because he already knows Jesus is much more than a carpenter, more than a rabbi, maybe even more than a man. But at your word, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. This miracle brings forth a two-part confession from Peter. First of all, a confession of faith, that Jesus is the Lord, God in the flesh, right there in his boat. Depart from me, O Lord. As Peter would later confess, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this miracle also brings forth from Peter a confession of repentance, that he is an unworthy sinner. Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. We have that same two-part confession in our worship service. Like Peter, we confess our faith, that Jesus is Lord in the Apostles and Nicene Creeds. And we begin our worship with a confession of repentance. Like Peter, confessing that we are poor, miserable sinners. Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. With these words, Jesus pronounces absolution upon Peter. Like the pastor announcing, In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. Do not be afraid. In the same way that Jesus' teaching and preaching and miracles affected Peter, Mark's Gospel tells us, Many who heard Jesus were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him, that he even does miracles? Isn't this the carpenter? They knew that a mere carpenter, a mere rabbi, even a mere man, could never perform such miracles. They came to the same conclusion as Peter. His miraculous signs mean that he is more than a carpenter, more than a rabbi, even more than a man. Especially his greatest miracle of all, his resurrection from the dead. As Paul says in Romans, he was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead. So the miracles that Jesus performs in today's gospel reading and all his divine works testify that he is very God of very God. Amen. Shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will
rejoicing in the light of Christ who has come to save us, let us pray for ourselves, for the church in all places, and for the confession of the gospel throughout the world, that through its light many may be led to Jesus' eternal kingdom. O God, as your Son preached to the crowds and called the disciples to follow him, you speak to us and call us through your holy word and sacraments. Fill us with your word and truth, and receive our sacrifice of thanksgiving, praise, and prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God of our salvation, we thank you that in Christ you have delivered us from every evil and given us the hope of everlasting life through his cross and passion. Bless the labors of all pastors and missionaries, especially Reverend Tom Park, who is sponsored by our synod in Taiwan, and call into the holy ministry men who, like Peter, are humbled by their sinfulness, but who rejoice at the astonishing catch that you bring in through their labors. We pray that you would prosper your word as it is carried in the fallen world by those whom you have made fishers of men that people everywhere may know the glory of Christ's kingdom. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy are you, Lord Almighty, and the whole earth is full of your glory. Watch over the nations of the earth, and let your will be done in every place. Give wisdom and understanding to those who govern, and maintain peace and justice in our land and among the nations. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of all comfort, help those who cry to you in every need. Grant healing to the sick, especially the many suffering at this time from COVID and its effects, and comfort the dying and those who mourn, that by faith they trust in your promise and cling to their Savior. Raise up the downcast, give hope to the despondent, and grant peace to the troubled. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Gracious Lord, in your holy supper, you give us a foretaste of the peace to come as you bestow on us your forgiveness, life, and salvation. Through this sacrament, strengthen us in newness of life to truly love and serve you and one another. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And finally, in some moments of quietness, we hold before you in silent prayer the longings and hopes of our own hearts and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hovering hands, Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And now we praise you that you sent us your only begotten Son, and that in him, being found in fashion as a man, you manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, 
evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh, to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.